Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely afternoon. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to read a piece of testimony from somebody that owns several tractor dealerships that also is speaking on behalf of an association that represents many other people that own tractor dealerships. This is a statement that was given before the U.S. House of Representatives Small Business Committee's Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Workforce Development Subcommittee. That is a mouthful. I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's several pages and that'll probably put you to sleep. I'm going to read a couple of bullet points and I want you to, I just want to see if you can follow along and think of where it is that I'm going with this before I make my point. So they're talking about the impact of a shortage of skilled workers on the tractor industry and the tractor dealer industry. She says that, you know, we have to deal with inflation. They have to deal with supply chain issues, taxing and regulatory environment that changes. But the consistent largest obstacle is a lack of skilled workers, particularly service technicians. The technician shortage costs AED members $2.4 billion per year. And more than half of the members said that skills gaps hindered the growth of their dealerships. Now, when you hear people testifying against right to repair bills, whether in Nebraska or Missouri or anywhere else, what, who usually shows up? People like the Equipment Dealers Association, who represents the tractor dealerships, and also people that own tractor dealerships. And one of the things that you'll hear them say is that you should bring it into the service technician. We're going to be able to do it properly. The, you know, we're going to make sure that everything is done, you know, running properly and emissions and all that other stuff. You know, we're, we're not going to be cheating on the emissions or you know, giving away source, scary source code or allowing you to compile a free speech Elon version of Twitter on your tractor. But whatever the fuck it is that they tell legislators and just... just a complete and utter bullshit fear-mongering garbage to get them to be scared from the legislation. One of the primary things that they wind up saying is you have to go to the dealer because we know how to do it right. And what this piece of testimony is telling me is that dealers are admitting up front to Congress we do not have the resources to be able to deal with our customers properly. The consistent obstacle is a lack of skilled workers. More than half of members said the skills gap hindered their dealership growth. Now, if we were to take this in a context of the testimony that it is you often hear from farmers, one of the things you'll hear from farmers, the biggest complaint, isn't even the price of going to the dealer, it's the time frame. If you're a farmer, you can't wait. This isn't like, I need to fix my computer so I can use Facebook, but I could use Facebook two weeks from now. You need your harvest to be, in order for that, all that stuff to get done, you need to plant right now. You need to do everything you need to do today. If you put it off for one week or two weeks or three weeks, this could screw up your harvest for the entire year. So not being able to get service when you need it is a serious problem. And limiting the people who are able to perform that service to only their authorized dealers who are admitting to Congress in writing that they do not have the resources to be able to provide these services properly is pretty damning. And in my opinion, an excellent tailwind for right to repair. One of the reasons that farmers need right to repair is because if the dealer is going to admit that they are not adequately staffed to be able to expand, to be able to perform all the services that are necessary, then you really do need to let farmers choose other people that do not work at the dealer to be able to give them the level of service that you're not going to be able to. You can't wait a week or two weeks or three weeks to get something fixed. You need to get it fixed right now. And if they're not going to be able to offer that, then it's very important that we not limit others from being able to offer that service that the dealers are admitting to us they're not going to have the resources to do. I'm going to link this to you in the description down below for anybody who wants to read it. It's an eye-opening document, and honestly, I agree with a lot of what's here. It talks about how we don't encourage people to get into the trades uh, like, like we used to, how more people should consider getting into the trades because they actually are good-paying jobs. They're offering people six figures to fix tractors here. I mean, that's not bad at all, especially if you're talking about the Midwest. Making six figures to work on tractors in the Midwest, that sounds like a decent job to me, especially if you don't have to deal with New York City weather. And uh, so it's just something I thought was worth bringing up. Let me know what you think in the comments down down below. Do you think that an admission from dealers that they are not able to hire enough service technicians to meet demand is a tailwind for right to repair, is a good argument in favor of right to repair? I personally think it is, and this is something that I'm going to be bringing up and sending to the lobbyists that we're dealing with in both Minnesota and Missouri right now to ensure that they show this to every single legislator. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.